Season 5 of Food Wars is upon us, and with that, we have to take a look back at some of our favorite scenes from Seasons 1 through Season 4. Spoilers. This video is brought to you by ChefPK.com. Yes, the website where you can check out all of my gear and purchase my brand new Annie Bites manga cookbook for you guys to enjoy. I hope you like it. You can order this now and it is available in digital format with all of your favorite manga and anime style recipes. Check that out at ChefPK.com. This is really the first interaction we have with Yukihira and Edina and I have to say, I didn't know what to expect going into this, but with that knife throw, with a little bit of skill, he was able to make scrambled eggs. No one really knew what to expect from this first thing where he just makes scrambled eggs, demi-gloss, and some steamed rice, but it does look like it had its effect on our girl Edina. Because, I mean, come on, look at this scene. It's its final form. He's able to make gelatin melt perfectly. Look at this. Look at the meltiness. And then this happens, and she's assaulted, and it's fine. Adding her to the list, we have Nikumi, and Nikumi is the master of meats, and that sounds very inappropriate, but that is really what she is, and her able to smell the meat. I can't say a straight face because it's so true, but now she's taken aback by onions. Yes, folks, onions. The reason why this was so important is because she was able to learn that a little bit of acid goes a long way. And that sounds very inappropriate as well, but we're not talking about the stuff you shouldn't be taking and the stuff you should be putting into your rice. Which I guess could be either either one. Just Nikumi needs more acid, it's fine. Yukihira's fluffy omelette. Now, I did try to make this, but not to the extent that he did. And this scene just reminds me of how crazy the restaurant and the food industry can really be. This guy, he makes all the souffle omelettes, he goes to work, makes them fluffy, half of them sink, and now he has to bust his ass to get them done. But can we just appreciate how fluffy they animated this? Look at, look at the fluffiness of these eggs. Look at him go. I had no idea how he's doing any of this because flipping a souffle omelette in a pan is damn near impossible and now I'm gonna have to try this once we make souffle omelettes again. Blood, sweat, and tears. This is what he is showing makes such a difference in the kitchen. He did it. Clap for our boy. No one likes a sore loser, and this is exactly what this lady is. She wanted to take over the town with her karage, which was in a box. These guys said, no, we're not taking it. We're not stopping without a fight. And that fight is double fried chicken. Yes, the only way to have it. I have to admit, this was one of my favorite recipes we had ever done on the channel, and this Sumiramar karage will go down in the books as my favorite way of having chicken, by far. Because I mean, look, she's the only one who, who didn't actually lose her clothes, she got wrapped up in some kind of a crepe. This should be labeled as a superpower, falling asleep while you're cooking and being woken up by the distinct aroma of when it is exactly at its perfect moment of cooking. If Yukihira were in My Hero Academia, his superpower would be sleep cooking. Because we all know Hayama is the nose master. Wrapping this thing in the omelette was just the coup de gras and then you get the fragrance bomb. The bakuhatsu don. This seems to be the theme with Yukihira. Get a secret ingredient, make it acid, add it to your dish, and then wow, pow, 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 boom. As I attempt to work on this recipe, it is by far one of my most daunting recipes to try to take on because you have to utilize these bento boxes. And the way he did was basically a happy meal, let's be honest. And that's not in a bad way, because you're able to dig through this treasure trove of ingredients and this treasure trove of dishes to continue to find these amazing things within your lunch. Even the old dude goes Super Saiyan. There are way too many instances in this anime where every character enjoys some kind of a salty ball. 
I think what I love the most about this entire execution of this dish is he was able to leverage all these awesome flavors into one distinct package, the treasure box. But this isn't even its final form. He has the kudzu sauce. You pour this over the rice, everything gets gummy and juicy and delicious. And this is where Alice realizes she just made sushi and put it into a box. This is where she realized she was part of Yukihira's harem. Now this scene doesn't even show the noodles that they were making, but what it does show is the power of friendship. I honestly didn't think this show would have Naruto Friendship No Jitsu in it, but seeing the crew come together for one final push to win the battle against the Mapo Tofu King was an amazing scene. Oh, uh, honorable mention, Alice making 3D printed chocolate for her curry. That's awesome. That needs to happen right now. If anyone wants to send me a chocolate capable 3D printer, I'm so game to do this. The infamous frozen tempura egg. This was actually kind of a pain to make, so I give my props to Yukita for being able to execute it. This was one of those dishes where it just really showed you how much Edina wanted to literally break out of her shell. Is that a terrible pun to use? But she was able to understand that playing with your food is the best way to learn new recipes. Let's be honest, you take anything cheap and deep fry it and it's usually still going to be pretty good as, you know, Edina knows. <laughs> God, that makes me feel dirty. This entire dish was probably the best example of what to use when you really have nothing laying around. This chef instructor was like, oh my god, you guys created pasta with potatoes. I didn't think that was possible. Like seriously, who hired these guys? What, is, what are they doing here? In the Soba battle, Soma proved that you can take cheaper ingredients and utilize them in a really awesome way by, you know, making hot soba, like yakisoba, because that's an actual thing. Even the judges, you know. Like this guy right here, he's looking like a real deal right now. Yukihita knew he couldn't compete on her level, so he just said screw it and went in a completely different direction, and the rest is history. I don't know why that Momo, above all of the other Elite 10, really kind of just hit me in a soft spot because she's adorable and look at these bouquets, who does these things? I mean look at her use her love gun against Anne. But don't discount Megumi because she comes back with her own love gun. This sounds really dirty. What's happening in the background with those fireworks is a depiction of what's happening in his pants. Because these two just found the sensu beans and then they go Super Saiyan. But then Momo comes back with an entire kingdom made of cakes. How do you even compete with this? Obviously, no one can, because look what happens to Anne, this poor lady. But leave it to Edina to just show everyone up with some pancakes. I mean, come on, you got a castle versus pancakes. Just listen to the sensualness of this music. Even the way she says, Gets everyone hot and bothered. How could you not? Love. I mean, everybody wants to be that bean paste. But then Yukihira shows up and says, you know what we need to do is make this ridiculous appetizer. I think he threw Erina under the bus, but I mean, chocolate just goes for it. But he's like, haha, I use store-bought yakiniku sauce. <laughs> to save the entire competition, Edina busts out the squids and peanut butter. But that's still not her final form. Her final form is copying Yukihira again. But I feel like this was just a slap in the face to say, Dad, you suck, eat my food, and enjoy it. Squid and peanut butter. And after the first bite, this happens. I don't know if that's legal or not, but that superpower has to be one of the best superpowers on the planet. Someone called Best Genist because, well... 
And of course, she has to take his signature line to end out this amazing first four seasons. These were some of my favorite scenes from Food Wars. Let me know what your favorite scene is and if it made the cut. I'm hyped for season five, and if you guys want to start cooking at home, check out my Annie Bites, my very first manga cookbook. Some of my favorite recipes from Foodie Friday, and you can pick up a digital version down in the links below in the pinned comment. My name is Chef PK, here on Chef Paul Reacts. Get subscribed, and remember, keep playing with your food. God, now I'm hungry.